Welcome back, coders, to another video. Today, we're taking a look again at Cyberpunk with its latest patch, which brings some really interesting updates to the console versions. Um, this is going to be another video settings update. Uh, I continue to make these videos because they continue to make changes that will affect how I feel about the vi image quality that is in the current game on console. On PC, you've had a lot of these options already, uh, but they recently just introduced to the Xbox Series X and PS5 versions and Series S versions, FSR 2.1. We're gonna go over what that brings, what, it, uh, what kind of impacts it has, both positive and negative, <clears throat> and how ray tracing compares in this mode versus the 60 FPS mode and what settings you should set that to in order to get the best image possible. A lot of things have changed since the last time, so buckle up and let's jump right in. So first things first, we are going to go ahead and just pan around in the 60 FPS mode and give you a quick glimpse at how this game looks right off the bat without any settings changed. This is everything maxed out. And I gotta say, this might be the first time their recommended settings are close to the actual ones I would suggest. You can see already right off the bat, FSR 2.1 being implemented by default has made this game significantly sharper and has given it a little bit more liveliness. So let's go ahead and go into the club and just appreciate the visual splendor that this game is. There's also a couple things you'll notice though that were taken away basically from a visual settings perspective or visual quality perspective. Um, not huge distractions, but noticeable nonetheless. So uh, crank this up to as high resolution as you can. We're capturing at 1440p and we should be able to see exactly what this is. This will be SDR tone mapped uh, from HDR because I'm playing at HDR, but it'll still give you a very similar impact to what I'm seeing. Uh, just slightly tone mapped down. Okay, so the biggest difference with FSR uh, that you'll notice is actually some of the sub-pixel breakup on the floor. So some of these high frequency details on the flooring, you can see right there in the well-lit area. You're gonna see this kind of stippled or more like stair-stepping issue. I don't even know what to call it, noise. Uh, that's a little distracting. This will crop up a little bit more often than I'd like and wasn't something that was particularly noticeable pre-FSR 2.1. So I think it's an aspect of their upscaling me uh, method. The other issue that I'll notice, and this is just a small one, um, is anytime the resolution changes, and it does seem to still use a dynamic resolution, uh, there'll be this kind of restructuring of the image real quick, like FSR 2.1 has to catch up. Uh, that being said, the benefits far outweigh these negatives. The image looks so much more closely related to an, a 4K native image than it ever has. And on top of that, we're also going to be getting smoother frame rate for all around. So in some of the trouble areas, like the central square, I'm no longer getting dips down into the high 40s or low, or low 50s. I'm getting much closer to that 60 FPS mark on a regular basis. On top of that, it feels like this is the first time that I'm not having to turn down settings to get a crisp native looking image. But we will take a look at what settings I do recommend turning off just to get the nicest image, but still hold true to that quality. So let's first dive into the settings. Oh, let's first do a quick comparison. We're gonna go and walk ourselves back outside and then switch it back onto the ray tracing mode to show you what that looks like with full settings on as well. So ray tracing mode still drops us down to 30 FPS. You just saw right there that little reconstruction issue uh, that I noticed. That's something that probably can be patched. I feel like it's an easy fix. If they just turn off dynamic resolution or maybe make it less aggressive, I don't know. There's some options there. Probably still gonna have to make another video, but let's go ahead and switch this onto ray tracing mode. Immediately, you're gonna know, notice a little bit more depth, a little bit more darkness in the shadows, and just overall, um, better highlights and we get local shadows. This is local um, ray trace shadows, which is really cool and does improve the image quite a bit, especially with these spotlights that are all around the city. So let's go ahead and take that walk again, but with ray tracing on. The biggest downside I've noticed is that it drops it to 30 FPS and it seems like it may either have, well, it probably has a slightly higher resolution, but it still has more of an effect on noticing that stippling. And I think that that's a related, like you're gonna see more noise in the flooring and stuff like that than you have 
yeah in the 60 fps mode and it's gonna be more distracting and i think that's just because there's less data in between it you can see right here now we're getting chunkier kind of issues on that so that's just one area but overall it definitely feels more next gen just from like the sheen on everything the better ambient occlusion and a couple other like nips and tucks that it improves and when you look at character models this is the biggest jump so if let's see if i can get a really good example here there are some characters in this bar that are that have some spotlighting on them let me see if i can go and take us back to one of them and we'll just do a back and forth to show you the difference but overall definitely a nice little jump and improvement so over here um i think it was the no it was the lady out front i apologize let's go take that take a quick look there up at the top there this lady has significantly better shadowing so right here like we're gonna just kind of stay right there and zoom in and you can see look at the shadow detail around that necklace there's nothing that looks fake about that shadow it looks like a real shadow it has penumbra effects everything like that the shadow under her glasses the way that that kind of uh, plays off of it her hair shadow all of this stuff the shadowing is just significantly better and the lighting is better so let's go ahead and quickly jump back just so you can see the difference and you can see right there this is now using screen space shadow so if i occlude that from screen you can see that disappears but overall still a really good looking image good enough that i don't think the hit to the 30 fps is worth it so we're not going to be spending a ton of time customizing our visual image to fix that but we are going to adjust a little bit our 60 fps mode so we can get the most out of it and get the most sharpness out of it so let's go jump into settings we're going to switch to the graphics tab and then we're going to see these uh famous infamous uh five settings now normally i'd turn off motion blur i'd turn off chromatic aberration i'd turn off film grain leave depth of field and lens flare but i'm gonna go controversial this time i think motion blur improves the image in fsr i'm gonna show you it with it off and then I'm gonna show you with it on, and I'm gonna show you why I feel that way. So one of the things is that with motion blur, it feels a little less untreated. So you're gonna see more shimmering around those lines on that pole and stuff like that, that fencing. And when you kind of move quickly, you're gonna start, start to see a lot less treatment on the edges of the images. Um, it's gonna look good in high, high frequency uh, environments, probably pretty good. Um, and I really appreciate that film grainless uh, image because it just makes you feel like you can breathe in it. But just overall, less treatment on some of the edges. So we're gonna go back over to the beginning again because I think it's just a good demonstration of what this looks like. And then we're gonna turn motion blur back on. And you're gonna see, I just feel like it gives more of a complete holistic image to the feel. So uh, film grain chromatic aberration, definitely turn off. Motion blur, I recommend you keep on so right here you're no longer seeing that crazy amount of uh breakup the pixel breakup you see a little bit of it but way less i think it does a, a ton of work to cover up some of the imperfections of the images that fsr does not cover up so this two these two combined make it really easy to kind of uh have a really clean image now you may not like that and you may think that distracts but i think overall this gives you a lot more film look and also kind of is more more in honor of the overall experience for the game so those are the two settings i recommend you turn off now keep motion blur on it will get rid of some of the distracting artifacts that you'll see and then we will continue to play in these settings now one more thing that i'll cover real quick is just what my hdr settings are uh, so you fully understand what i what i've got set up for my display but i highly recommend you customize it to yours because it's going to be better uh, if you just adapt to your display my display is not a full thousand nit brightness screen so i only have it at 800 just to kind of get a little bit more of those peak brights uh paper whites 210 1, 1. 1.5 these are all defaults um if you're changing uh let me see if i can find this if you're changing um any sort of uh like darkness indicators i would actually reset those to default because now native looks a lot better than it used to so either way keep up the good work hopefully this is helpful to your experience on xbox series x xbox series s and ps5 and let me know in the comments did this improve your image or did it make what make it look like ass either way thank you again for tuning into uh our channel make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell for notifications and as always 
Stay classy, coders.